Uh, thanks for coming to uh, this early session. Um, I hope you had a lot of fun yesterday. Um, those Cisco Live events can get really busy. Um, so I really appreciate you guys coming. Uh, I guess you have a lot of interest in learning how Thousand Eyes can be deployed and how you should deploy it in your Cisco SAS environment. Um, my name is Primo Sechny Coleman. I'm a global technical solutions architect at Thousand Eyes. Uh, just before we go on, um, Cisco WebEx app, you already know it. Um, why am I mentioning it? In the end of this session, we'll have a QA session, um, maybe some 10 minutes or so. But if you have any other questions, um, you can join the discussion there. Uh, the channel will be open for, an, uh, for a couple of days. Um, and I will try to answer those, those questions even after the, um, today's presentation. OK. Um, so I already mentioned my name, uh, just a short introduction. Um, actually, um, I have background in software development and computer networks uh, before I joined Thousand Eyes in 2015. So I've been with Thousand Eyes for um, almost eight years now. Um, I've been in a couple of different uh, roles, but those are all customer-facing roles. So I was working with the customers to try to understand um, you know, how they use Thousand Eyes, um, how they deploy it, et cetera. Um, and that's actually me when I was a bit younger. Um, this is my first computer uh, that I had. Um, anybody knows what that computer is? It's a Commodore 64, yes. There's also actually Spectrum down there, uh, but I haven't really used that. We all know that Commodore was way better. Okay, um, I know it's very early, so what I like to do is just, you know, uh, wake everybody up a little bit. Um, you've probably come here with certain expectations. Um, and I would like you to open your mobile phones, uh, just take a picture of that QR code, it will take you to a slider. And what I want you to do is just put in one, two, maybe three words of what comes to your mind when you hear Cisco Sassy. Um, I'd like to just understand, you know, kind of the public opinion of Cisco Sassy so I can better understand um, what you know about it and how we can position, uh, how we can position Thousand Eyes into that picture. So yeah, just, um, oh, that's an interesting one. Uh, it's probably a puzzle. Um, OK, excellent, excellent. Security, security, security. Umbrella. OK, uh, this is really, really good. Um, I'm so happy that you came to this session. Uh, why am I saying that? Um, Sassy is actually a combination of two components. Yes, it is security, it is security in the cloud, but it is also network connectivity. Um, and what I want to understand today is that Thousand Eyes is not a security product. Um, we are digital experience monitoring product. Um, we really want to understand how the network part of Sassy works. Um, how your users experience uh, business critical applications. Uh, Viptela, it's <laughs> a really small part in, in up there. Nobody actually mentioned, uh, yeah, there's SDVN, it's a really small one, but yeah, you know, SAS is actually SDVN plus umbrella um, when we're talking about SASE, um, SASE at Cisco. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, it gives me some ideas, um, you know, what to put my focus on. Um, so let's, let's continue. <clears throat> So the agenda for today is, um, first I'll do a short introduction. Um, maybe some of you guys were at my session yesterday when I had this really basic overview of Thousand Eyes. So a couple of slides will be a little bit redundant if, if you've been there. <coughs> but, but I think it's really, really important to establish what Thousand Eyes is for everybody else. Then we'll talk about agent deployment, how you deploy Thousand Eyes agents um, in your SAS environment. Uh, and then we'll go through test configuration. We'll see what kind of tests you should set up in your SASE environment, uh, what kind of tests you should set up in your secure remote worker environment. Uh, so we're talking about uh, workers usually working from home, and then about Secure Edge, which is how you set up Thousand Eyes to monitor business critical applications from your offices. Uh, in the end, we'll just do a short recap, and then we'll finish up with a, with a QA session. Now, um, before we start, um, 
I have this feeling that a lot of you haven't actually seen Thousand Eyes in action yet. So what I would really like to do is just do a short demo so you guys will understand why we are here, what, why, what are we after with Thousand Eyes, why we should really deploy it. Uh, so it's interesting because um, this first demo will be, I'll just, uh, I'll just do a use case on, on the SDVN, uh, which many of you are not really perceiving as part of SASE, uh, but at least when it comes to Cisco, SAS, uh, SDVN is an important part of SASE still because that's, um, that's the component that provides connectivity between your branch office and your data centers and so on. <coughs> So what we have on the screen now is uh, an actual look into the Thousand Eyes application. Um, Thousand Eyes application um, has this interesting feature called, um, called live share links. Uh, what does that mean? It means that um, when you capture, when you see an interesting event in Thousand Eyes, you can actually create a snapshot of it. Um, and you can then, if you want, publicly share it around. That's really useful, uh, for instance, when you have an issue and you want to send something maybe to your ISP or some other third party vendor that you're working with, and they don't necessarily have Thousand Eyes access. You can just do a snapshot and you can share it. And this is exactly what we see. Um, so here we have a, a snapshot of, of an interesting event that happened in, uh, actually in our SDVAN lab. And what we were doing here is the following. So <clears throat> we have this SDVAN lab, um, which has four offices, and you can see those four offices down there um, on the map in the bottom uh, part of the screen. So here, um, you see we have two offices on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, and one um, in London. And those offices are all connected <coughs> through the SDM fabric to our data center, which is also <coughs> uh, located in, uh, in Bay Area on the West Coast of the US. What we're doing on a very high level here, we have decided to monitor an on-prem application because especially in SaaS environment, usually um, when your users are accessing cloud applications, they will probably go out through Umbrella, right? They don't go through SDVN. But for the on-prem applications, SDVN is still very important. So we are monitoring this, this on-prem application called the NetData, sdvndemo.com. And we are monitoring that application, which is hosted in our data center in, in, in the Bay Area. We are doing that from all four um, office locations. And what we're doing here is, on a very high level, we're just, me we're just measuring the page load. What does that mean? We're measuring how long does it take to initially load up that application. Um, you can see, in average, it takes about well, 80, so just slightly under a second to actually load up that page. And what do you mean with the page load? Well, if I click here and go into the waterfall, um, maybe some of you guys are familiar with that. Um, waterfall is something that you can actually see in every browser if you go to the to developer tools. It shows you all the objects that are being loaded for the web application to be successfully presented to the user. Um, and you can see, you know, usually things are happening quite quickly. Um, you know, initially we load up this, this um, HTML um, file, which is, and, and you can break this down to, to different um, stages. For, so for instance, first we need to resolve the domain name. That really happened very quickly. Uh, and then it took us around 20 milliseconds to establish TCP handshake, um, which means from this specific location, I'm actually looking from the location in, uh, in San Francisco. So yes, it's very geographically close. We can establish this TCP connection really, really quickly. Um, and then you know we've sent some data and we waited for the response. Um, there is no SSL uh, phase here because um, we're not we're not using a, an HTTPS site, uh, a web page. So um, and things happen quickly. And then you see this red line in a, in less than a second the page actually loads up. So what was happening here at some point in time, you can see that the page load actually went up. The solid line represents how long the page load took from San Jose. And then, um, you, know, uh, um, and then you have this background uh, uh, chart. Um, sh it shows you the, the, um, the average from all the locations. But you can see the average went up, but mo more specifically from San Jose, um, it was also a significant increase. Uh, we actually went up to something like seven seconds. Uh, I, know it's, I know the letters are pretty small, but it says seven seconds up there. And if you look down at the waterfall, um, you can very quickly see that things are now a little bit different. You see more of this grayish thing there. Um, and what's actually happening is the following. Um, if you look at the data, it says, um, just to connect to the web server, 
uh, just to establish TCP handshake, it now took us 200 milliseconds in instead of 20. That's already, already an indicator that there probably was some kind of a network issue there, right? If it would be just the application, uh, the TCP handshake would still be performed in, you know, in the usual time. And, um, and then we were waiting for 200 additional milliseconds. And that was just for one object, just for one JavaScript file. There were many other objects where we were waiting for, look at this one, um, we were waiting for, what, four seconds for, um, for this object to load up, another JavaScript object. So it, everything is just taking longer. Um, it takes longer to connect, it takes longer to receive the data from the web server itself. So this is a really good indication that this is not actually an application issue, it is a network issue. Now, how do we confirm that? Um, we can go down um, into the network layer. So the point of Thousand Eyes is, Thousand Eyes, what we do is we do synthetic tests. We do synthetic tests from agents, which are located where our users are, towards business critical applications. On a very high level, we monitor the application itself. Then we go down and then we have network metrics. You can think about that as an advanced pink if you want. So we're just sending packets up and down the network. You can see at the same time, um, there was a little bit of packet loss, but this is really, uh, really small amount. But let's look at the latency. And what you see is at that time, we actually had a large latency increase. Um, so this has now just confirmed that it is a network issue. Let's blame the network. Um, it's not, it's not um, an issue with the application itself, uh, which is just a confirmation. What we don't know is where in the network this is happening, right? So what I'll do is I'll go down to the path visualization. Path visualization is just, uh, I would call it an advanced trace route if you want. Uh, we do that trace route with the same type of protocol that the main application is using. So in that case, it's actually TCP port 80. And what you see here is just the visualization of that path. Um, it, on the left side, you have four of our agents, which are located in four different offices. Uh, so you see here it's Ashburn, Chicago, uh, London, and uh, San Jose. And then here what you have is the SDVAN router in, on the office side, right? And on the right side, you have SDVAN router in the data center side, and then of course this is the final, uh, the final target, which is the, this, this SDVAN demo application. Um, this thing looks pretty simple, right? It's just a couple of hops, which makes sense, because you have local LAN on one side, then you have the SDVAN fabric, which is this thing in the middle, and then you have your local LAN on the right side. And actually what you see here is, oh, there's a red line, um, and it says, oh, there's a 260 millisecond increase in latency between the two SDVAN routers. Now if I just go back here, um, you can see, at least for San Jose, um, things were around 20 milliseconds before the actual outage. So now we found the, the, where the problem is, right? It's in the SDVM fabric, done. Let's, no, we're not done. Because in our case, in, in this lab, um, our SDVM fabric actually goes across the internet. And we have different ISPs. So if the problem is in the SDVM fabric, how do you know what's causing it? Um, you don't know yet. Um, so this is why with Thousand Eyes, and, and we'll talk about that into details, you should always set up an underlay test as well. Um, what am I talking about? So I will just jump to the other screen now, and this is now the underlay network test between the same locations, except we are now sending this traffic not through the SDVM fabric, we are sending our test probing traffic directly out into the internet. Now, the timeline looks pretty much the same, which is how it's supposed to be, right? If we have latency increase in the internet, well, of course, we'll have it through the tunnel and under the tunnel. So um, this picture here looks very much the same. What is changing is the following. If I go back to the path visualization, uh, now it's a much different, much different um, view, right? So each, if I just focus um, on uh, San Jose, where you know we're reporting probably the highest latency increase, although there are latency increases with other locations as well. This is what's happening. So here we are in San Jose. This is our SD1 router. And then this is our upstream ISP in San Jose. It's QS Communications Company, uh, sorry, in San Francisco. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we go through this QS network. Um, then QS is actually peering with level three communications in San Jose. And then level three is peering with uh, Comcast in San Jose as well. And Comcast is actually the upstream provider of our data center in this case. And what you see now is once again, we see this red 
line. There's also a red circle, which indicates a little bit of a packet loss over there. <coughs> but we also see this red line, which indicates um, high latency. So what you can see now is we actually have high latency between Comcast, which is our upstream provider in data center, and our sd one router, um, which is in, in our data center. Um, so just to double check that this is unusual, uh, so 200 milliseconds, I will go back in time, check the same link again, and it's now just one millisecond, right? So this was just a quick example of why you want to deploy Thousand Eyes, uh, because a lot of people are asking me, look, you know, we have vManage, there's a lot of data in it. Um, that's the missing part, right? Um, you can see uh, a lot of statistics in vManage, um, and you can um, uh, see if you have any issues, but with Thousand Eyes, you can actually figure out exactly where the issues are happening, especially when we're talking about the internet. Maybe less so in the MPLS, because MPLS is kind of it's just a transparent cloud. If there are issues, um, there's not much you can do, but um, in that case, you only have one service provider. With the internet, you might have, as you've seen in this case, we had three service providers in the path, and um, it's, it's really important to have that view. Okay, so that was just a little bit to get a taste of Thousand Eyes. Why are we actually here today? What are we trying to achieve? Um, so let's continue. Um, let's do a, a short introduction of, of Thousand Eyes. Um, by the way, um, the, uh, I really left because um, I delivered this, uh, this session for the first time uh, for Cisco Live last year um, in, in Vegas. And um, when I was going, uh, when I was going to, to the airport, um, there was a car park next to my car when I, when I parked. And I looked at, you know, the, I was going to Vegas to present this session on SESI. And I looked to the right and it's like, oh, SESI and Fabulous at 40. And I was like, okay. You know, that's, that's a car that I could have as well. Um, maybe not the color, not my thing, uh, but it was like Sess in Fabulous at 40, yes. Um, but, um, so let's just talk about Cisco Sessi bundle uh, first. So, um, you know, uh, Gartner came up with this term Sessi a couple of years ago, uh, which is kind of describing what Sessi should be. Yes, you're right, it's pretty much all about security in the cloud, but it's also about network connectivity. Um, this is really important, um, and every vendor um, in the market is trying to fit this sassy term with their own solutions, right? Um, and the way Cisco imagines it so far, um, and, and it's a concept that's always been kind of, uh, you know, evolved, and there are new things coming, but so far, sassy for Cisco is a bundle. Cisco says, if you want sassy, um, you can purchase Umbrella. Uh, so that will give you security in the cloud. Uh, you can purchase SDVN. It could be Cisco SDVN or Meraki SDVN. Um, now you can also do some zero trust network access, ZTNA, which is currently provided by Duo, but Umbrella is now also providing some of those solutions. And the last part of it is, is visibility with Cisco Thousand Eyes. And I see that um, PowerPoint has put Thousand and Eyes uh, apart, um, which is usually we always put it together. Um, so for now, it's more of a bundle. Um, you also know that there's this service called Cisco uh, Plus Secure Connect, which is kind of the first step into actually making, the, making uh, a SESI service. Um, but what I'm trying to point out is, at this point in time, there is no real single product or integration that would fit Cisco SESI term. Um, so everything we'll discuss today is, so what bundle brings you actually is, if you buy one or more of these products, um, you will get some discount, right? If you buy Umbrella and, and SVN and Thousand Eyes, you will get discount on all of these. But there is no tight integration, there is no service as such. Um, this is the current state. Um, I believe things will change a little bit in the future. Um, but for now, Thousand Eyes is, okay, you can use it in your SaaS environment, you can get some discount, um, but it's not like you can just say, hey, I want you know, five kilos of Cisco SaaS and you just get some Thousand Eyes with it. Not yet. Okay, so let's talk about why, so everybody understands why I want Umbrella. Um, it's security, right? Um, everybody understands why I want to have SDVN. Well, it's the best way to connect um, your users in the offices with your on-prem applications. Um, but why do you need the visibility component? Um, this is usually where people are like, well, um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain why would you want to have that in your, in your environment at all. Um, so um, I, you know, uh, I always like to say um, I actually have prescription glasses. I now wear contact lenses, um, 
And I always say, you know, visibility in your SaaS environment is a little bit like uh, prescription glasses. Um, at first, you, you know, you look around, you, you see just fine, um, and then um, at some point your, your sight is getting worse, um, and you walk down the street and somebody across the street is like, hey, and you're like, hey, and you don't even know who that guy is, you know, you're just being polite. And then you think about it, you're like, oh, maybe I need some prescription glasses. And then once you get the prescription glasses, you look around and like, I don't know how I, how I was able to leave for so long without prescription glasses. Um, I'm always saying that it, with, with visibility, it's exactly the same. At first, you don't feel the need for it. You know, you need security and network. Um, then you purchase some thousand eyes and you give it a test and you're like, wow, that's um, actually very nice. And then when you have it for a year, you're like, oh, I, I, you know, I have no idea how we managed uh, to survive without thousand eyes uh, before that. One more thing I want to mention here is just like a footnote. Um, Sometimes we talk about SASE visibility, sometimes we talk about SASE observability. Uh, we also in Thousand Eyes like to use this term digital experience management. Um, there are different terms that are being used. Um, if you ask me, potato, potato, um, call it whatever you want. Uh, but usually when Thousand Eyes is being used uh, together with App Dynamics, which is a slightly different use case than what we're talking about today. We call it observability because it's part of full stack observability. Uh, but in terms of SASE monitoring, we usually just say that Thousand Eyes provides visibility in your SASE network. Uh, so, you know, if you just see those different uh, terms when you look at some Cisco sheets, etc., don't be confused about it. It's basically all the same thing. So, why do we need it? Um, all of us here, we work for the same people. Um, we work for our users, we work for our employees, either they are in our company or in a partner company, um, and we are here to ensure that these guys have absolutely flawless experience with their business critical applications. Um, so what do these people do in return? Um, you know, they send us low letters, and no, actually they usually just complain. Um, when everything works, we are nowhere to be seen. When things are not working, the users, the employees are always complaining. They're like, hey, Houston, we have a problem. Uh, Teams is not working. Uh, WebEx is not working. Office 365 is not working. The internet is not working. It's always the same thing, right? Um, what's interesting here is that um, the users are not really saying, hey, um, I think you know, my local switch is actually dropping some packets. Or, um, yeah, you know, um, this router that we have in the office has really high CPU. You never hear that from the users, right? Why am I saying that? Because the usual approach is let's monitor all our devices that we have. Oh, there's high CPU, uh, let's, let's do something about it. Um, it's hard to correlate, especially in the modern world, it's hard to correlate what users are saying, what kind of problems they have with what's actually going on in the network, right? Just looking at a bunch of CPU and, and drop packets, et cetera, data, it's kind of hard to figure that out. Um, so this is where Thousand Eyes comes in. Um, by the way, um, before we were acquired by Cisco, um, I'm not sure if you've actually visited our booth any time before this event, um, but back then we were giving out T-shirts. We were known by our T-shirts. We've given out tons of T-shirts. Actually, even this year, if you really want Thousand Eyes T-shirt, go to our booth. Um, you won't get it directly, but we have a nice iPad there. You put in your address and we will ship it to you. Um, what I'm trying to say is by far, by far, the most popular t-shirt is the one that you see in the upper left corner. Go ahead, blame the network. Um, half of our t-shirts that we've given out is this one. Everybody wants that one. Um, and you know, some people are smiling a little bit in there. Um, so we all know what's going on here, right? Whenever something is wrong, um, everybody blames the network. So this is where Thousand Eyes comes in. We are trying to, um, well, what we're giving you with Thousand Eyes is one of two things. If it is the network, we tell you where it is. If it's not the network, we tell you that it's application fault, and you can then use that to go to whomever is you know, causing you problems and say, hey, it's the application issue, right? Um, so the real problem landscape is this. Uh, secure remote worker, we have uh, our employees that are working from home. Uh, now, of course, you know, what's here on the screen is one, one of the possible architectures, but usually the way this works is, especially now in SaaS environment, is remote user is, is, is using AnyConnect. For all the on-prem applications, he's probably ha using AnyConnect to create this tunnel to your on-prem um, applications in your data center, or it is using Cisco SaaS, it's using Umbrella, it's using Duo uh, to connect through Umbrella, um, maybe doing SSO with Duo to connect to public 
cloud applications, to connect to software service applications, just to connect to the broader internet. So when users are working from home, what happens? Um, they complain, they call us in, um, you know, I cannot use Office 365. At that moment, you go through this mental checklist. It's like, uh, do you have Wi-Fi? Uh, what kind of home network do you have? What kind of ISP do you have at home? Uh, maybe it's Umbrella. Uh, maybe it's a transit ISP. Uh, maybe it's our VPN gateway. So these are all the questions that come to your mind, and you kind of want to address. And if I just jump back to what I was saying before, you can't really look at the you know, SNMP counters to figure those things out, right? You have absolutely no idea what this guy has at home, what kind of ISP, what kind of router. It gets really complex. It's not really much better when it comes to Secure Edge. So here we're talking about your office. Uh, what's different here is in your office, you typically, in, in this SNMP environment, you typically have an SD1 router. And then uh, from that SD1 router, um, packets go through one of the two ways. If the users are actually opening uh, internet and SaaS applications, again, we go through Umbrella, we can potentially use Duo. Um, if we use on-prem applications, we go through the SDVM fabric. And it's a really similar thing, right? You go through this mental checklist, is it the enterprise network, is it the SDVM underlay, is it the SDVM overlay? Point being, you, you have absolutely no control over a huge chunk of the digital supply chain. Most of that is not even, it's not your network, it's not your devices, those are not your applications. <coughs> and it's really hard to figure out what's going on with the traditional tools. Thousand Eyes is solving that with synthetic monitoring. We deploy agents where the, where the users are, we perform synthetic tests against those applications and we give you all that information about what's going on and where the issues are. The end goal is to create a dashboard such as this one that on a very high level shows you, okay, Office 365 availability, 100%, uh, Salesforce, 100%, Umbrella, 100%, DNS, 100%, everything is fine. And down there you have, for instance, location over you, it's like, oh, Ljubljana Office, wait, uh, there's, there, there's something there going on with, with Google when you access it through Umbrella. And this is something you, I want to just check out and see what's happening. Uh, point being, you want to have this dashboard when everything is green, you are confident that there are no issues and that your users are happy. If your users are complaining, you quickly jump to the dashboard and just look, oh, yes, I see it, yeah, Office 365, yep some issues there, let's, let's figure that out. Um, look at this guy, um, you don't see his face, you don't see his body, yet you kind of feel that he's very comfortable, very confident in his position. He has all this data in front of him, um, and that's because he's using Thousand Eyes, and he has this visibility that puts him in, in control. And that's kind of one thing I want you to remember today. Uh, there'll be a lot of details which you will forget, but it's like, why do you want visibility with your SASE bundle? Because it puts you in control. You know what's going on in your environment, um, and you can always either help your users or deflect their expectations because the fault is absolutely somewhere else. Uh, one more thing I want to kind of point out is, uh, look at this guy. Um, he's looking at some dashboards. He's looking at some data, right? Um, this guy's not a manager of the hospital that's looking at monthly statistics like, oh, you know, that rate went up for 0.3%. No, he's a surgeon. He's looking at the data that he will need in the next couple of minutes or hours because he will perform a surgery, um, which means the data he's getting must be actionable. He's not looking at some reports that are meaningless, SLA, whatever. He's like, no, I'm looking at the data because I want to understand what I need to do next. Do I need to fix my network? Do I need to contact Microsoft? Do I need to contact my ISP? Data visibility must be actionable. When service degradation occurs, uh, you need to quickly identify where the problem is. The point of Thousand Eyes is to reduce your mean time to identification and mean time to resolution. With it, you're saving up your uh, cycles, you're saving up on time, and basically, let's be honest, I'm not sure how many of you are actually working in operations, but nobody wants to like, troubleshoot things when, when something's not working. Uh, we all want to do new projects, play with the new technologies, and with Thousand Eyes you can reduce the time that you actually need to troubleshoot things and, and focus on, on, on better work. Um, what do you mean with visibility must be actionable? Here is just an example. Um, for instance, before you've seen on the dashboard something was red. I look at the timeline, I see, oh, there's an increase in service response time. Uh, oh. That is actually because the network latency increased. What has happened? Let's look at the path visualization. Oh, there was a network latency increase. 
in the Microsoft's network. That's where the problem is. Done. It just took me like, you know, one, two minutes, and I know what my actions will be. In this case, it's Microsoft. If, uh, you know, if I'm their partner, I can contact them, or I can be like, okay, there's a huge Microsoft outage, such as what happened two weeks ago. Um, there's nothing we can do about that, right? Uh, you enjoy the silence because nobody's uh, pinging you on Teams, um, and you just wait for it. There's no need to, like, you know, hectically go to your network what's going on because you immediately understand it's Microsoft, let's just relax, you give this feedback to, to whomever is complaining, and that's it. Okay, now let's go to the actual uh, Thousand Eyes deployment. Everything Thousand Eyes does, we do almost, most, almost everything. We do from our agents. You need to deploy our agents as close to where your users are. Everything starts with agent deployment. The first thing you have to do when you enter Thousand Eyes, you need to deploy some agents. Now, there are some use cases where you can use our cloud agents, which are already being pre-deployed, but those are almost not used in SASE environment. So when you want to do some SASE monitoring, definitely you need to deploy the agents first. Um, and we actually have, uh, well, three, but basically two types of agents, we'll talk about it. Um, and based on where your users are, you decide which, which agent you will deploy. Let's start with the secure remote worker. Uh, remote worker is somebody with his laptop that is just wor uh, working from uh, wherever he wants. So, you know, Cisco calls that hybrid work. Uh, every Friday I work from home. On Tuesdays I'm in the office, um, then I fly to Cisco Live, I work from the airport. Um, the only option to actually monitor digital experience from the point of view of that user who's always moving around is by installing an agent on his computer. Uh, for that reason, we have this thing called the Thousand Eyes Endpoint Agent. Um, it is installed on your computer. Um, we support Windows, we support Mac. And um, you can, um, obviously, you can install it manually, but in your organization, you would usually push it out uh, using something like group policy, uh, maybe, or on Mac, you would use Manage Software Center. What the endpoint agent does is a couple of things. First of all, it performs active application network uh, monitoring, testing. <laughs> very, very similar to what we've just seen in this short demo when we've begun. The demo is actually from the um, enterprise agents, but the concept is the same. You decide which applications really matter to you. You set up tests against those applications. You get a view that's very similar to what I've just shown you at the beginning of this session. <coughs> In addition to that, uh, Endpoint Agent also passively collects performance, da performance data. Uh, it collects information such as the strength of the Wi-Fi signal, um, the retransmissions of the Wi-Fi signal, the, the CPU, et cetera. Um, the Wi-Fi signal metrics are super, super important. Um, a lot of you guys have Cisco or other Wi-Fi solutions in the office. It's actually fairly easy to figure out if some users have Wi-Fi problems. But when those users are working from home, you have absolutely no idea what's going on there. Endpoint agent give you that information. It's like, oh, the user you know, has issues with Office 365. Why? Well, your, you know, your Wi-Fi connectivity speed is 500 kilobits per second. Um, and you know, when the user is complaining, you're just like, well, look, I'm sorry, but you know, you're working from home. I see your Wi-Fi strand. Can you move somewhere closer to your router? Can you change your router? Can you do something about it? So, in many cases, for remote users, you can't really solve their problem, but at least you can make them proactive. Like, look, it's your problem, I see what it is, what can you do about it at your home? Um, it's, uh, it's really useful for a couple of things. Because it resides on the user's computers, it can detect whether the user is using VPN, whether the user is using proxy. It shows you all of that data, because this is really important. If the user is complaining, oh, Office 365 is not working, you really want to know, is he connected to VPN? Is he using any of the proxies? Is he, if he, is he using Umbrella? So you even know where to start troubleshooting. So it detects all of that. And more importantly, it also starts to monitor all of that. For instance, I'm a user, I use AnyConnect. At the same time, Thousand Eyes Endpoint Agent will automatically start to probe the head end of that VPN termination. Um, and I will get information such as, well, uh, the user is complaining about the on-prem application. Why? Oh, I see. There is packet loss between his home and the actual VPN termination point that we have. And, and, and you start looking into that. Uh, more, most importantly, it follows the employee wherever he works from, from home, from office, from everywhere. Now, let's go to the secure edge um, scenario. Uh, we're talking about offices here. Um, so you have an office, it, it has 
one or multiple routers that connects the office through the SVN to your on-prem applications, um, and potentially through Umbrella or other solutions to the cloud uh, security um, um, solutions. We use the Thousand Enterprise Agent there. <clears> Thousand <throat> Eyes Enterprise, uh, Enterprise Agent is a standalone appliance. Uh, we'll talk about more about it in just a moment. But basically, you put it somewhere in your office, and you monitor all those business critical applications from that office. The advantage of that is that um, if you have an office of 100 people, you can just deploy one agent, and you get relevant data from that office. You don't need to install 100 endpoint agents and monitor each of those. Um, <clears throat> there are some other advantages which I will mention. I mentioned that we also have this thing called the Thousand Eyes Cloud Agent. Essentially, technically speaking, it's exactly the same thing. It can perform all the same tests as the enterprise agent. Uh, there is one difference, though. The cloud agents are deployed by us. We currently have them on over 400 locations around the world, uh, over 200 cities, over 63 countries. Why would you use, use that in your SaaS environment? I mentioned already, maybe it's not so useful. Um, it, it's usually used for some other use cases, such as when you're a uh, mobile bank or an ret online retailer. You want to use our cloud agents to monitor how that service is being seen from different parts of the internet. It's still useful, for instance, if you have a VPN gateway, you can monitor your VPN gateway from multiple parts of the country or, or the world just to see if it's reachable. Because when users are complaining, uh, when you see that from the endpoint agent you have connectivity issues with your VPN, you can check your cloud agents and say, yeah, of course, like from the whole world our VPN gateway is not reachable because of something. Or, or maybe it's just not reachable from the UK from a very specific ISP. So it gives you a little bit of in additional information, but mostly this uh, scenario is based on Thousand Eyes Enterprise Agents. Now, Thousand Eyes Enterprise Agent, um, <clears throat> you want to install it in your office, you want to install it in user VLAN. Why in user VLAN? Well, first of all, uh, we want to monitor the user experience. So it has to be deployed as close to the users as possible. Um, I mentioned Thousand Eyes is not about security. It is about uh, ex experience. It is about connectivity. Um, but what Thousand Eyes also gives you, look, you put it in the user VLAN, you start to test Office 365, and if you have some kind of a firewall rule that's preventing that, Thousand Eyes will tell you. Will tell you, hey, the packets go up to that node, and then they're being dropped. Um, so it's important from that perspective, you want to monitor exactly what the users are experiencing. On the other hand, deploying Thousand Eyes is usually really easy because you do it from the perspective of the users, which means in most cases, you already have access to all those applications. Firewalls are open from that subnet towards certain applications. Everything is working except when you use authentication. In that case, Thousand Eyes also support, uh, supports uh, authentication, so you need to you know, configure that manually. But in most of the cases, things will just work. Um, you can install Thousand Eyes Enterprise Agents on Cisco Catalyst 8000 devices, uh, which are Cisco routers. Uh, not all of them. There's a matrix um, on our website. Um, I won't go into the details. Um, or, well, we'll see. Maybe we'll talk about it as well. So, routers, um, and that's usually the use case uh, when we're talking about SASE, right? Because you have SDN routers, probably. Um, it's usually a good idea to deploy the agent on the SDN router. Um, so, we also support ISR 4K. Unfortunately, we don't support ISR 1K except a single model. Uh, it's a very simple reason. Um, it's the hardware. It just cannot support our agent. I do understand a lot of you guys, so when you have SDN, have ISR 1K at those small locations. The alternative is to deploy an agent on Catalyst 9K, uh, but more specifically, 93 and 9400. <coughs> if you have that, you can deploy it there. If you have none of that, you can deploy an agent as a virtual machine, as a Docker container. If you have absolutely no compute, no supported Cisco device in your offices. You can deploy it as Intel NUC. Uh, we provide an image with which you can just flash your Intel NUC, and it becomes an appliance that is managed by us. You don't need to manage it anymore, or even Raspberry Pi. Um, so those are the options. <coughs> Point being, install it on whatever is available. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, I want to monitor SDN. Do you need to put the agent on the SDN router? No. It really gives you no specific advantage if you do that, except from manageability perspective. So basically, use whatever fits your environment best. 
Um, once you do that, it doesn't matter anymore. Again, we are sending synthetic traffic. Now, if the agent is on the router or plugged into the router and residing on the uh, Intel NAC, it doesn't really matter from our perspective. Um, so the enterprise agent performs active application and network performance testing. Uh, we've seen that example uh, that in, in that short demo. Um, the advantage of the enterprise agent versus the endpoint agent is that, first of all, it can perform complex web application testing. Uh, you can actually do user journeys. Um, you can say, let's not just go to Office 365, but let's log in, see if there are any new emails in the web application. And you can measure and monitor that as well. Um, we can even go through ZTNA. We can do all kind of authentication processes. We support Kerberos, NTLM, et cetera, with the enterprise agent. <clears throat> so it's really good to test that. Um, and in addition, it can test the VPN and SDN underlay. Um, why can the enterprise agent do that and the endpoint agent cannot? Uh, we'll talk about it. If you want to get that traffic into the underlay, you will need to configure some data policies in your SDN router. Now, you don't really want to do that for your users. It's not like, hey, let's just allow some traffic to go into the underlay for our users, unless you specifically have the DIA. So you're not doing that with the endpoint agent. But with the enterprise agent, it's a dedicated machine. You can configure policies just for that agent to perform monitoring without actually poking any holes in your security. Um, what's really important, it, it provides constant baseline regardless of what's going on if there are any, any active users. Uh, you've seen the timeline before. I had two days of timeline, 24-7, because the enterprise agent is there, it's working. It's not, as, it's not so with the endpoint agents. You know, I work, then I close my laptop, there are no measurements anymore. Uh, then I, you know, I'm like, hey, I need to grab a coffee. I go with my laptop to grab a coffee. Meanwhile, I, go, I change three access points on the way. My connectivity is dropping. Um, and there are just you know, a lot of holes in that data and, and, and maybe even some false positives. Because honestly, if you see some application experience was really bad and the Wi-Fi signal was really bad because somebody just took his laptop to the coffee machine, it's probably a false positive, right? We don't, we don't really care about that much because the user won't complain about network connectivity when he's drinking coffee. <coughs> okay, yeah, so let's go to the details. Uh, those are the specific devices that we support. Catalyst 82, 8200, 8500, ISR 4K, ASR um, 1000. You can, uh, if those routers are in the SDN mode, you can install our agent through uh, vMesh. Not, it's not just you can, that's the only way to do it. Uh, use dvmanage to install it. Uh, there's, um, we have documentation on that on our website. Uh, just check it out. It's, it's really, really easy to do. Um, if you have those same routers but not in the SDN mode, only in that case you can install it using the CLI installation. We have all the commands on our website as well. You just put in a couple of commands and that's it. Uh, there are certain requirements in terms of ISXE version uh, which you need to comply um, if you want to install those agents. I know that is potentially a problem for, uh, for the older uh, deployments, uh, but those are the requirements. Um, now, this is important. The agent once installed, yes, you rec we require a certain ISXE version to even start with the agent, but once it is deployed, uh, we auto-update the agent independently from ISXE. That's important because honestly, 1000 eyes we usually deploy new updates uh, every two weeks. Th those might be really small updates, and that's kind of part of it. When you purchase 1000 eyes subscription, you're not locked into a certain version. It's a, it's a SaaS. Uh, so, you know, 1000 eyes is SaaS, which means you're always getting free uh, updates, and the agent inside the, it's running in a Docker container, it's always updating, regardless of your IS, ISXE version, which you probably want to keep stable for quite a long time. Um, there is one caveat. I mentioned this thing called, um, that you can do this really high level tests, uh, you can perform a user journey. What I've shown you in the demo at the beginning was just like, let's open this website, see if it's working. That was simple. You can also perform a, a, a proper journey. You go into the website, you do certain things. That test, it's called the web transaction test and the page load test, they do require a browser component inside our agent. That browser component is not available on Catalyst routers, on, on any Cisco routers, unfortunately. Um, so you're missing one or two test types. If you do that, all the other tests are available. Now, do you need that or not? I would argue it's a nice thing to have. 
Uh, but at the same time, I do understand, like, if you have this huge deployment of Catalyst 8200, it is definitely your best way to deploy our agent as well. And you'll just be like, okay, I want to use this test. It's a nice one, but we can live without it. Uh, Cisco switches, Catalyst 93 9400. You can install it through DNA Center or CLI. It doesn't matter. Uh, here are the iOS XE requirements. If you do not have SSD in those devices, which often happens, you can run exactly all the same tests as on the router. So no browser bot tests. But if you put in an, the actual SSD drive, um, you can do that even after the Thousandize agent has been installed. Magic happens. You restart the agent, and our agent suddenly will have all these browser bot tests. So it's a good addition. If you have Catalyst uh, 93900 at the location, use, maybe use that to, to deploy Thousandize agents. Mm. Uh, one more thing I want to mention here. Um, this is important for a lot of our customers, and they're asking me. So Thousand Eyes is subscription-based. Um, you, know, you can purchase Thousand Eyes through various means. We also has, have, still have this special uh, opportunity. If you purchase Catalyst 93 or 9400 with Advantage uh, or Premier licenses, with it, you get a small amount of Thousand Eyes units for free. It's kind of a promotional uh, thing. Um, which means if you purchase 1,000 of these uh, switches, which some customers do, you actually get a decent amount of Thousand Eyes units. You need to activate them, and then you get Thousand Eyes account, and you can use those units to do whatever you want. You, once you have Thousand Eyes units, you don't need to actually run it on those Catalyst switches. You can use those units anywhere you want. Uh, so it's a good promotion for your customers. A lot of customers are just getting those units. They don't know exactly what to do with it. Um, take a look. Um, try it. Try it out. It's free. They can deploy some really uh, basic stuff. Basically, the amount of units that, that they are getting is for every Catalyst switch, they get the amount of units to run one simple test every five minutes. Um, but if you have a lot of switches, it really adds up, and, and you should use that opportunity. And then even you can even install agents on your Catalyst routers um, and use that opportunity to do something like SVN monitoring. That's completely fine. Uh, Meraki. Not yet. Uh, keep an eye on the announcement. Uh, Cisco Live uh, 23 this June in Vegas. Um, I think we'll have some nice things to say about Meraki. So yeah, we're getting on Meraki as well. Uh, pretty much all except some really basic devices. I think the lowest two models, uh, MX models, will not support it. We will get on all other MX, uh, MX models. Uh, I mentioned Cloud Agent, not as important um, in the SaaS environment, uh, installed in many cities, many countries. Uh, most of our Cloud Agents are installed at broadband ISPs, but we also have them in cloud providers uh, and WebEx data centers. We'll talk about that. This one is kind of important uh, because you can use it to monitor your connectivity between your offices and the WebEx data centers. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, it just complements and improves your enterprise agent tests. Um, it's also good for reference metrics. Um, you open up a new office in Jakarta. Um, you put in the enterprise agent, and you're testing some basic things. And things don't look well. What you can do then is you can use our cloud agent in Jakarta to test exactly the same services, let's say Office 365, and compare the data. So you have this baseline like, well, you, know, you guys are telling me that that's the best connection we can get in Jakarta, but from Thousand Eyes, if you go directly from a cloud, cloud agent in Jakarta, it works three times faster. So you have this reference for other parts of the world as well. <coughs> OK, so let's say our agents are deployed now. Step number two, um, we need to configure some tests. Uh, let's start with the secure remote worker. Um, so first of all, I mentioned endpoint agent does some passive monitoring. So what we have here is uh, we have this remote worker on the left side. He's working from anywhere, from home, uh, has maybe Wi-Fi, and it has the endpoint agent installed. Um, and by default, without us doing anything, absolutely anything, um, it performs Wi-Fi performance metrics. Uh, it checks the computer performance metrics, CPU memory, etc. cetera. Uh, there is one option to even monitor, passively monitor browsing sessions. So we can say, um, we want to monitor our browsing sessions of the user when, when he goes to Office 365. And we can passively monitor get. We can get access to those waterfall graphs, et cetera. So it's all being done passively. Uh, so yeah, browser performance metrics. Um, 
nth, by default, we are also doing active probing. So again, without any configuration at all, we are doing active probing against, first of all, the default gateway. We are always kind of pinging the default gateway to understand what's the connectivity to the default gateway. That also includes usually the Wi-Fi lag of, of things. So it's a really important piece of data. Oh, Office 365 is not working. Well, you have 500 milliseconds latency to your default gateway. You know, that's where the problem is. Um, we do the test against the DNS server, whichever is configured on the, on the client itself. Also important, if uh, the user has the proxy configured, we are testing the network towards the proxy. Um, and if the user is connected to VPN, uh, we also um, do this underlay network testing against the VPN gateway. Uh, we support multiple different VPN vendors, not just the AnyConnect. Um, so you should be covered even if you're not using AnyConnect in that case. And then we come to scheduled testing. Uh, scheduled testing is every endpoint agent can run up to 10 scheduled tests. So you have to decide which uh, business critical applications you really care about. Um, you have to do a list. Um, OK, Office 365, this, that. And then you configure those tests. And um, you can actually do some, let's say, balancing. Um, you can actually say, look, 50 of our users will monitor Office 365. 50 of our users will monitor some other suite of applications so you can load balance things. But you're kind of limited to 10 tests per a single agent. Um, <coughs> And what you would do is you would also pick applications that your, aid, your uh, users are reaching through different paths. For instance, um, Office 365 SS application, you are using Umbrella. I will set up a test against that. And then the traffic will automatically flow through Umbrella proxy, through Umbrella cloud, out into the internet, and back to, let's say, Office 365. You set up an HTTP server, you put in the URL, things just work, because whatever user has configured, this is where the traffic will actually flow. The other one would be pick one of your on-prem applications you care about um, when the user establishes. And, and you can actually do some kind of conditioning here. You can just say, well, just monitor that from the users that actually establish uh, VPN connectivity, or from the users that are actually in the office uh, not working from home, something like that. So uh, do something against the on-prem, because this will go through the AnyConnect or other VPN to your data center. And um, what you can also do, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it on the next slide. Um, so target business critical applications. Um, this slide is really just for your reference. I've already explained it. Endpoint agent is limited to basically two test types. Uh, enterprise agent has a much larger suite of tests. Um, it is HTTP server for web applications, uh, which means there's no real browser up there. We just do something very similar to curl requests, um, which means we test the web application HTTP server response, but we don't really download all the images and JavaScript files, etc. cetera. Um, or simple network tests, ICMP, TCP, whatever you want. <coughs> Now, we also have this new thing called the automated session testing. Uh, so far, I mentioned if you want to create a scheduled test, you put in a target IP, target URL, magic happens. Um, what if you want to monitor WebEx or Teams? Uh, do you know the URL or IP address for WebEx? Mm, yeah, you don't really. Maybe just for the initial meeting zone. It's your company's name.webex.com. What your client is really doing, you have no idea. Because the way those clients work is they try to probe uh, where is the closest data center, and then they connect to those closest data centers. This is why we created the automated session testing. What the automated session testing does is you configure it, and you say, I'm interested in WebEx. And what the endpoint agent then does, it, it listens to WebEx process, and it looks at all the connections that WebEx is actually opening. For instance, I go on WebEx now. I will probably connect to the data center in Amsterdam, worst case in London, right? Endpoint agent detects that, and it automatically creates a network test from the endpoint agent towards that specific node in London or in Amsterdam. Um, this is really useful, and we've actually, just a not long time ago, we've done the integration with the WebEx Control Hub. If you integrate Thousand Eyes with WebEx Control Hub, you go into the WebEx Control Hub, you see a certain user had bad video on a certain call. Um, you can click on that user. It takes you to Thousand Eyes. If you have automated session testing enabled, you will actually see that user was connecting to those three IPs. 
and here is your pad visualization, here is your latency loss, and if we detected it, you can see where in the pad this latency or loss was actually happening. Um, and that just um, you know, happens automatically. So this is really, it's tailored against the collaboration apps because they're complex, um, but um, our AST actually supports uh, other other uh, applications as well. Uh, what's really new, and we just introduced that, is now it's not open to the customers yet, but our assets can do it. We can now configure uh, custom apps. So if you guys have application nobody ever heard about, and you have thousand eyes, you can talk with your thousand eyes SE or your sales representative and say, hey, I'm really interested in that app. Can you guys figure it out? And there's a good chance that uh, our assets can just create all the rules that this will work. Um, so yeah, um, you know, web zone, multimedia nodes, collaboration bridges, we test all of that. Uh, we track the connections and then we, uh, we, we kind of perform those active testing. Okay, uh, let's talk about Secure Edge. Uh, now we are in the office. Uh, we are using the enterprise agent. Uh, there is no automatic stuff on the enterprise agent. It does not reside on user, user's computers. I want to really point that out. Thousand Eyes is not sniffing any traffic. We don't do packet capturing. We don't do any flow monitoring, um, which is really good in terms of when the customers are uh, kind of interested in security. No, we don't care about your traffic. We generate our own synthetic traffic. Um, but at the same time, it means that you know, now you have to think about what kind of tests you will actually set up, because by default, our agent does not know which are the important applications, et cetera. Um, so you have to think about that. You go through the list with the customer, watch what are your important business critical applications. Um, and it will say, OK, Office 365, uh, how do you get there? We have a tunnel to umbrella. Excellent. You set up a web test. It could be page load. It could be web transaction test um, against Office 365. Because you have positioned that enterprise agent in the VLAN where the users are, that traffic will automatically be routed to, through the tunnel to umbrella. Maybe the user is using something like pack files to divert the web traffic. Um, if that is the case, they should tell you, and when you create a test, you can put in the pack file, and then once again, we will use that specific proxy that is specified in the pack file. So here you need to have a little better understanding of the customer environment, because we're not automatically grabbing the data from anywhere. Um, but um, after that, it should be fairly easy to do. You should not really need any config uh, firewall configuration changes, except for one thing. I've, I've shown you the uh, pet visualization. Uh, what we require to build that pet visualization is that for all the packets that we send out, we want to get ICMP time exceeded packets going back in. Now, all the stateful firewalls can do that, can match the session, but some customers have explicitly denied ICMP rules. In that case, you might lose visibility in your pet at some point. Um, Talk with the customer, it's fairly easy to open up the firewall just to allow those ICMP packets that match the outgoing session uh, without affecting any security. <coughs> WebEx uh, usually goes directly, it doesn't go through Umbrella, it doesn't go through the SDN. At least that's how customers should do it, right? Um, other deployments usually cause issues. Um, how do you do that? How do you figure out where the closest WebEx data centers are? Um, in the office, you might have 100 users. 90 of those will connect to Amsterdam. 10 of those will connect to London for some reason, because their client figured out London is better. So how do you monitor that from a single agent in the office for all these users? Um, we now have cloud agents in WebEx data centers. That allows us to create a very special test called the RTP test. Uh, what we're doing is we're sending a stream of RTP packets, uh, very similar to, to WebEx uh, voice. Uh, to measure the ability of network to carry uh, voice and video traffic. Um, what you would do in the, in the office, um, it requires a little, so if you're here in the Amsterdam, we know primarily WebEx data center in Amsterdam, fallback, London, probably not Frankfurt. Um, so you would set up tests against Amsterdam and London cloud agent in the WebEx data center. So you cover these typical paths. What happens if there are huge network outages that affect your ability to connect to Amsterdam and London. Um, do you need to monitor other data centers? Well, no, not really, because when the WebEx users start to complain from the office, you look at the data, you're like, well, of course, Frankfurt, 
London, Amsterdam, uh, data centers uh, of WebEx are not reachable, of course you guys have issues. At that point, you don't really care whether they connect to, to Mumbai or not, right? Because you know the root cause of what is causing the issues already. So it, it requires a little bit of, of knowledge of what's going on. Um, you can also use your WebEx control hub to understand from every location where the users are actually connecting and just to each data center and just pick those. So a little bit of manual work um, to deploy it, but uh, once it's deployed, you have it all covered. And then, of course, the on-prem applications. The way you set up tests for on-prem applications versus SaaS applications is exactly the same. You pick up a URL, maybe you do even do a user journey with web transaction. The only difference is where the traffic goes. Now the traffic goes through, the, uh, through your SDN. And you cover all these paths. So, <clears throat> you know, I said you need to create, uh, ideally you would create a test against every application users care about. That's really not practical. Uh, there could be 50 such applications. Uh, thousand eyes, the more tests you have, the more you spend. Um, so you need to do some compromises here. Usually, you sit down with the customer and say, tell me top 10 of your applications. And then you also take care about that uh, you have at least one on-prem, at least one SaaS application, so that you also cover those pets. Because honestly, let's say you have 20 on-prem applications. I can just monitor two of these and I will capture all the network events that are happening through the SDN anyway. Um, so you have a lot of overlap even if you're not monitoring exactly every application that, that uh, the customer is using. Okay, uh, so target business critical applications. Really, this is just uh, for your reference because I've, I've, I've talked about a lot of this. Um, configure appropriate web tests. Now, if you have SSO, or any kind of authentication, really, um, you can use page load and web transaction tests. Uh, they are being run in the browser, and we, complex com we, we support complex uh, authentication uh, types. You can do Kerberos, NTLM, uh, we can do SSO, uh, we can even do multi-factor authentication with one-time tokens. Uh, a lot of the things we can actually do that to get through those authentication layers. So even with the ZTNA, if you have that now in Umbrella, uh, we can get through all of that as well. Um, use RTP tests for corroboration, let's say against WebEx data centers. If you have teams, unfortunately, we don't have our agents there. You will have to fall back to something like TCP probing instead of real RTP tests. And there is <coughs> real value in cloud network performance. What, what, what I'm saying here is the following. If you test Office 365, um, Yes, of course, you will test it through your network, you will go to Umbrella, but you will also test the lag behind the Umbrella and to, actually, to actual Office 365. There's a lot of value in it. Just remember two weeks ago, Microsoft outage, nothing to do with your SaaS environment. But having Thousand Eyes to show you that there's value in it, you can say, okay, we're good, no need to spend time on troubleshooting cycles. It's happening in the cloud. And there's a lot of things usually happening in the cloud. <coughs> Again, cloud, uh, cloud agents don't play a major role, uh, but you can use them in uh, WebEx data centers for this two-way uh, RTP testing, and you can use cloud agents in the same area. That's that Jakarta example that I was talking about, just uh, to have some reference baseline uh, how things should work. Now let's get to the underlay testing. Yeah, I, I gave you a little bit of that uh, in the initial demo, um, and here it is. Um, you should always test against your umbrella data center from every office. How do you know which data center to, to um, target? Um, well, again, you usually connect to the closest two data centers that they have, unless you use, well, usually you even have those manually configured, but even if you use auto VPN, they are the closest two, and you set up tests, usually ICMP, against those head ends. Um, all the umbrella data center IP addresses are published on the internet, so that's fairly easy to do. For SDN, you do the same thing. Uh, you monitor the IP address that is in the underlay network of your data center router. Uh, we just need to get that traffic uh, into the underlay. For Umbrella, that usually just works because um, there's a really high chance you have DIA configured. Uh, Umbrella always goes across the internet. Uh, things get a little bit sketchy uh, with, uh, with SDN. I'll talk about that. Okay, um, underlay testing, it gives you that hop-by-hop -hop insights that you've seen. That's really important to understand which of the ISPs is causing you issues, but it does require additional data policies on your edge router. 
there are some examples where things will actually just work out of the box. Namely, if you, your SDV location has one internet and one MPLS transport network, and you have DA configured, then things will just work because you're already sending a lot of traffic just out into the internet. So if I target the public internet address of my data center router, that traffic will already be routed, netted into the underlay, into the transport network. But in most cases, no, you will have to configure some additional rules. Um, that's just the fact of it. Uh, that's still the reality. Hopefully, in the future, that will happen automatically with further integrations with Cisco devices. But for now, you have to do it manually. Um, there is an interesting session tomorrow, if you're really, really, really interested in implementation details of those policies. On Cisco routers, there's kind of a deep dive session into, into that. Uh, that that's, that's tomorrow, so you can, uh, you can go to that if you're really interested. Now, <clears throat> I just want to, I will still do some technical stuff here because I think it's really important to understand why and how you deploy the enterprise agent on the Cisco router uh, to get all this visibility. How does it work? When you deploy an enterprise agent on a Cisco router, a virtual port group interface gets created. A virtual port group interface is an interface that is, requires its own subnet, unique subnet. It has to be positioned in a VRF or a VPN. Now, when you install it through vManage, you will get two options. You can install it in VPN0 VRF or VPN0 or in the service VPN. Uh, I would say 99%, you always install it in the service VPN. You assign it a unique subnet to the virtual port group you have created. Now, some magic will already happen. That virtual port group subnets will automatically be advertised into the SDVM fabric, uh, but might not be advertised beyond that, let's say, in your data center, et cetera. So you might need to think about that. Um, and you will already be able to perform all the application testing that I've mentioned, because you are now already part of the service VPN. You, you can test those business-critical applications because you are positioned where your users are. And the routing is working because your subnet is being advertised into the SDVM fabric, et cetera, which is great. Uh, but just be careful, maybe in your data center where the firewalls are, et cetera, you do some aggregation or whatever, <coughs> and you know, at that point, out of the SDVM fabric, things are not happening automatically anymore, so still think about that. You need to establish uh, you know, uh, routes to that subnet in both directions. Um, so it's simple, it's up and ready for application testing. Um, but if you want to monitor the underlay, things get a little bit complex. Because, because now, let's follow those blue lines. Um, I have two transport networks. Uh, one is the internet. Uh, it's connected to that specific internet interface. One is the MPLS connected to that specific MPLS interface. Both of those interfaces are, are in the VPN zero. Um, and what I want to do, I need to somehow send our test traffic into those two transport interfaces. I already told you if you have uh, DIA configured, one internet, one MPLS, magically that will happen for the internet, but that's not, you cannot really rely on that. So you need to create some data policies on your edge routers for that. You do that through vManage. And the data policies should basically be the following. First, you need to match certain conditions. The first condition is the agent's IP address. You only want to do that for the agent. That's why, I'm, why I told you before, don't do, you cannot really do that with the endpoint agents. You don't want your users, clients, you know, to be allowed to go in your transport network. That's a security issue. For the enterprise agent, you could do that. So you say, if it matches the agent's IP address, then we have two different arrows here. One goes to transport A, one goes to transport B. How do we make a, a distinction between those two types? or just normal application test traffic. Uh, we use DSCP uh, bits here, markings. <clears throat> so what you would do is, first of all, if you're using QoS, um, you need to figure out if there are some DSCP markings that you're not using. In this case, I was like, OK, let's use DSCP 10 and DSCP, DSCP 12. So you're saying, to test the internet underlay, all the tests that are going from the agents will use DSCP bit set to 10. 
to test the MPLS, it will be DHCP bit set to 12. Um, I made this up. You can pick whatever you want, whatever it's available. And then you create a rule that says if the traffic match. So in 1000 lines, when you create network tests, you can also select a different DHCP bit. By default, we're using zero, but you can actually change that. So you create two tests with those DHCP bits. Then you create a rule saying if it comes from agent IP and has DHCP bit, DHCP bit set to 10, do two actions. Action number one, net it into the VPN zero. That will get it down into the VPN zero, but still it doesn't really <coughs> push it out through the right interface. And then the next action is you have to say, <coughs> and, and this is what you do through T locks. Basically, you give it a T lock um, for usually in this case, for instance, the internet would have the T lock of maybe business internet, and the MPLS would have the T lock of MPLS, and you say, and then assign it to T lock business internet. That will push this packet out into the internet into the right transport network. Um, so this is how we configure it in vManage. Basically, you do a global policy, um, and it's just the same thing I was mentioning. On the left side, match the right source IP. You, you typically create a list of all our agents with their source IPs. Uh, match a DSCP bit. So for internet, I match number 10. For MPLS, it's something else. And then on the right side, accept it, net it to VPN 0, and then set local TLOC list to, well, it's not business internet. It's public internet, whatever the customer is using. <coughs> and here is the tricky part. It says encapsulation IPsec. You actually have to select, select a encapsulation, but this will not happen because you have netted the packet before. It's already in, 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 uh, in um, VPN zero, so this encapsulation will not, be, will not happen. The packets will just be pushed out through the right transport interface. This is how I configure it. Now, some customers will be like, ooh, that's scary. Also, you need to uh, enable net outside to start with, uh, that might already be there if you have a DI configured. So this is something really you, you should be doing with your uh, SDVN engineer, right? Um, but uh, that's, that's, that's how you do it. Um, if you really want to go into nitty gritty details, again, there's an interesting session, very technical session about that tomorrow. Let's speak about one more thing. Um, SDVN topologies. Um, you have different SDVN topologies, right? You can have hub and spoke. Uh, one data center, all the offices connect to the same data center, maybe two data centers, whatever. Um, so it's kind of a linear, um, you know, the number of connections, which is W, um, is being increased linearly. For every new location you add, basically um, you get a um, linear number of, of potential as event tunnels. Or you can go full mesh, right? All offices are interconnected. Uh, between each other, um, and now you know we have this power of two increase of possible connections uh, based on the number of locations. Um, it's everything's doubled because you usually have two two transport networks. Look, let, let's face that um, with thousand eyes you can't really monitor full mesh underlay. The way these things scales, you are very quickly in hundreds and, and thousands of possible interconnections. That doesn't scale. Um, it's hard to set up. It will cost you too much. Um, you should always. So I said, when you're setting up application testing, you should follow the most business critical applications. And when you do the underlay testing, you should follow the most used paths. And let's be honest, nowadays, things are going from the office to the data center. There is very, very little traffic going between the offices. Maybe you have some of that. Maybe you have two super critical offices, and you can actually monitor underlay there as well. But in general, always go hub and spoke topology with thousand eyes monitoring. Um, you will end up with that, for sure. Umbrella underlay testing, uh, if you just have one internet and one MPLA transport network with DIA, this will just work. You target the umbrella <coughs> public IP address of the data center, that just works. Uh, if not, configure yet another data policy, just the way we've seen now for SDVN, but create another one for umbrella. Maybe say the SCP bit number 13 will be used for umbrella. Let's push that out through the internet interface. Um, Okay, I'll show you one more demo, <coughs> um, because I just want to show you, um, well, here we go. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'll show you the demo in a moment. Um, can I ask you for some help? Uh, I have no power on my laptop for some reason. 
my laptop died meanwhile. I, I didn't realize it's plugged in. So while we're waiting for that, um, let's go through the couple of remaining slides and we'll, go to, we'll get to demo then. Um, should be part of here, but yeah, maybe it's somewhere else. Um, a couple of things you also have in my, to, to keep in mind. Umbrella, when you use Umbrella, there's a high chance you're doing SSL inspection, uh, which means you're terminating all your uh, web sessions um, with Umbrella Proxy, and then Umbrella Proxy presents its own uh, CA certificate. Uh, that's quite possible. Um, when you have that, and when you're by default sending all the traffic to Umbrella, you will install the agent, agent will not show up in Thousand Eyes. Because it will say, I'm getting a certificate, I don't know. Um, every agent is connecting to Thousand Eyes Cloud through an HTTPS connection. And it can work through proxy, that's fine, we don't mind. But by default, we don't know any of these um, uh, certificates, so we're just like, mm, you know, we're not doing that. Um, what can you do? You have two options. My recommendation is download Umbrella, root cert. It's very easy. It's, it's in Umbrella itself. And install it on the agent. Uh, the install it on the agent actually is a link. Um, when you look at the slides later on, you can click it. It will take you directly to our documentation section when it explains how to do that. Um, it's not very easy to, there's a little bit of manual work to do that on Cisco routers. I, I understand we're, the user experience there is not the best yet. We're working on it, but it can be done. The other option is you're just like, ah, oh, too much work. Just disable SSL decryption for agent traffic based on the source IP address. I would actually argue against that. Remember, Thousand Eyes is all about measuring user experience as the users actually experience it. So if we remove SSL uh, inspection just for our agents, we're not getting the same experience anymore. You know, now the traffic is just going out without the inspection. It's probably going to be faster, and you won't be able to detect issues with Umbrella when it's doing uh, SSL inspection. So try to install the root cert. Um, if you, s you have Umbrella, if you set up the agent, if the agent doesn't show up in Thousand Eyes, this is number one issue, for sure. OK. Um, so let's talk about Umbrella SAML authentication. One of the options that you have in Umbrella is to also enable SAML authentication in Umbrella itself, which means by default, when the user for the first time opens up uh, any website, Google, it gets presented with Umbrella uh, SAML um, form. Uh, and then you have different types of authentications. Um, once again, when you do testing through Umbrella from Thousand Eyes agents, um, if you're doing basic tests with our HTTP server test, uh, which is behaving a little bit like curl is behaving, um, in that case, oh, we're getting there, excellent. Yes. Uh, so in that case, um, perfect. In that case, um, you will actually not get to Office 365 you will be stopped at the Umbrella SAML interactive login authentication. Um, it will not work. You should, in that case, actually use our page load or web transaction test, which supports all kind of authentication types. And you can solve that authentication to get to Office 365, and you can actually measure both steps independently. It takes so much time to authenticate uh, SAML with Umbrella, and so much time to then actually open 360, uh, Office 365. It gives you additional information. It helps you troubleshoot Umbrella SAML issues as well, or other SAML issues that you have. <coughs> Worst case scenario, you don't want to do that. You're like, I don't care about authentication. Always just get me through. Um, you can, once again, uh, whitelist uh, our agents based on the source IP. Um, and um, and um, it will just go directly through. There will be no SAML authentication. I would argue, you know, it, it really depends what you want. Um, there's no, previously I was like, no, definitely install the certificate here. It depends. If you're really interested in SAML component, let's do that. If not, let's just pass through. OK, um, so let's just talk. Um, I'm just trying to get um, my laptop online. Sorry about that. Um, so let's just talk about the endpoint agent in Secure Edge. Because pre previously I said, look, endpoint agent is this fantastic solution. It follows the user anywhere when he's working from home or from the office. So why are we complicating things with, with the enterprise agent at all? Um, why can't we just use the endpoint agent, even when in the office? Um, well, look, arguably it brings some value into the Secure Edge uh, scenario, especially because employees still use Wi-Fi when, when they're in the office. So that Wi-Fi data that we're getting is actually quite useful. Um, 
but probably, for instance, if you have Cisco Wi-Fi solution, a lot of that information you already get from your Cisco Wi-Fi controller. So there's a little bit of redundancy there. Um, while when they're working from home, it's like information that otherwise you just simply cannot gather, right? Um, but really, the enterprise agent has multiple benefits. It has this cons consistent baseline. Uh, we can do this really complex application layer schedule test types like web transactions, user journeys. We can do RTP tests against WebEx. We can do DNS tests, which endpoint agents cannot do by default. And only with the enterprise agent, we can do underlay testing. You don't want to really create data policies for, for some user traffic from their client, right? OK. Um, let's talk about device layer in Internet Insights, because those are two functionalities that um, you will also hear about it when it comes to Thousand Eyes. Um, do you need them, or should you use them in SESI? Um, so device layer um, is the functionality that provides you kind of the insight into your layer two um, devices, switches, etc. cetera. Um, it comes for free. Um, yes, you should definitely use it. Basically, what it does is it pulls some of the SNMP data from your switches and routers, etc. cetera. Um, not something that you are, don't have covered already, for sure. The advantage is that you, have, you now have this layer two data in Thousand Eyes together with layer three data, with path visualization, it, and, and you just aggregate all the data. Like, if you see, oh, in the path visualization, I have issues in my enterprise network between two layer three hops, you can then go to device layer and see if there are any other layer two hops in between and if they're actually dropping any packets. Now, Internet Insights, they provide this, this, this app outage detection on the, on the Internet scale. Internet Insights, we aggregate data from all the tests that we perform in Thousand Eyes, from all the customers, and we give you information such as, um, let's say there was a Teams outage last uh, two weeks ago. If you log in into the Internet Insights, it basically told you there is a global outage of pretty much all Microsoft services, as well as SAP, uh, Slack, and a bunch of other services that are also hosted in Asia. Um, if you're a global organization, if you have global SDVN deployment, Internet Insights makes sense in your SaaS environment as well. Because um, if you have a global SDVN disruption, you can just look into the Internet Insights, and it says, yeah, there's a level three outage on the east coast of, of, of US. That's a valuable piece of information, instead of looking through tens or hundreds of thousand nice tests. If you're a small organization, if you're just in one country, maybe a few countries in Europe, no, Internet Insights, it's all really global scale thing. It doesn't make sense. Um, the point is, both of these two um, eliminate unnecessary troubleshooting cycles. It just gives you the opportunity to figure out things faster. OK, um, now we'll go back to the demo. <clears throat> what, else, what I want to show you is um, uh, it's, it's just going to be a little bit as event specific. Uh, let me go here. So <clears throat> what we have here is um, this is another lab environment that we have. Um, and we have two locations. Uh, two offices, um, and they are actually being connected uh, via, uh, through the SDVN. Uh, oh, that has not worked. Sorry about that. Let's see. Okay. Something has been reset. Um, I'll just explain what's, what's going on in the demo, and uh, hopefully it will wake up. Maybe I'll need a little bit of your help as well with this device here. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let's see. Maybe we'll make it work. Um, if not, I think we have seven more minutes. Let's do the Q&A session. And then if you have some time, I'll show you the demo in the end as well. Just, yeah, not sure what's happening. OK. Um, do you guys have any questions? Well, um, yeah, OK. Anyone, any questions whatsoever? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, <laughs> those are actually two separate questions. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, um, you have to pay for it. Yes. Um, so here's the thing. Yeah, um, 
sometimes, for instance, you have a proxy and you really want to have this network visibility before the proxy and after the proxy. And because proxy is essentially a layer four device, a layer five device, um, and higher, um, really, and, and our network tests, the way we perform them, it's all layer three and four, they get kind of, that, that path visualization gets stopped at the proxy. <clears throat> you can actually position another agent next to the proxy um, to do the other lack of the underlay testing, and then you can stitch the two pieces of data together. Uh, in Thousand Eyes, we have this thing called the multi-test views, which allow you to basically merge uh, views. So everything you've seen so far in the demo was a single test. Uh, but you can merge multiple tests into the same view, and then you have two path visualizations side by side, one up to the proxy, one from the proxy on. Uh, so that works very nicely. Technically, uh, you will have to pay for two tests. Yes, that's how it is for the moment. Uh, do we have any other questions? Yes. Yes. Um, when you have, um, so you can also do enterprise uh, to enterprise agent tests. Uh, we call them agent to agent tests. Uh, they give you some advantages. Uh, first of all, um, the network metrics that you get are become uh, unidirectional, uh, especially if you have uh, asymmetric routing. Uh, you get maybe latency in one direction is five milliseconds, in the other direction is twenty milliseconds. If you have agent on both sides of your SDN fabric, you get this view. Everything else is round trip time, right? So that's a huge advantage. Uh, with it, you can monitor the throughput, um, and you can check if the ISP actually got you the connectivity you're paying for. Uh, that's the second advantage. And again, if you have asymmetric routing, the path visualizations are bi-directional now. You get, uh, the, you get path visualization in both directions. If you have agents in, uh, in service VPNs, that will just work. For the underlay, you cannot pull that off at the moment. We're trying to make that happen as well, so the underlay would be bidirectional as well, because it would be nice to see if you have a asymmetric routing in the internet. At the moment, you won't be able to pull it off. There are some options, such as in data center, you actually deploy an agent outside of your SDN environment, just in the internet, then you use some complex data policies on the office side. Uh, if you go to that session, I think the guy is actually talking about some of that. But uh, honestly, I think it's pretty niche. OK, don't worry. Look, um, we're good. Um, you guys are running out of demos. Um, I had an interesting session yesterday. Uh, just look up Primo's, my name, um, in the video on the band. You can see some additional demos. They were pretty nice. Uh, so don't worry about that. We're running out of time anyway. Um, so yeah, that really works nicely for the application testing. Uh, maybe RTP, if you still have you know, good old IP telephony, that's a good way to test it. Yes, please. In recent years, we had the function called IP SLA. Is that the base for the thousand ISP strategy? No, uh, we have absolutely nothing to do with IP SLA. Um, all the tests that we do is from our agents. Uh, IP SLA is, is a functionality of a, of a router or a switch or a Cisco device. Uh, it's a completely different functionality. Um, some of the things are similar in a way. Uh, the biggest advantage of thousand ISPs is how we aggregate all that data together. Um, because if you remember the first demo I've done, and really, go, go check the video on demand of my yesterday's session. There were more demos. Um, the whole point of Thousand Eyes is, look, I know you guys can do ping and trace out as well. It's not magic, right? The whole point of Thousand Eyes is how we aggregate all this data together so when you look at it, you can get to the, to the root cause in just a couple of minutes. That's kind of the point. So yeah, IPsec is an interesting technology, uh, but I would say the way we integrate all that data um, and, and also the way we perform some of the tests is, is on a much higher level. The downside is you need to deploy the agent. IP, you know, IP SLA, you, you just have it there, right? Yes, please. Uh, I'll just come closer, because, um, yeah, it's a big room, and you don't, uh, we have no mic. Mm -hmm. For example, you have uh, 1,000 to one point that will be fixed to my application. It will be one request to my application. 
Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So the gentleman was asking, like, if I have one application and, and, and I'm testing that from a large number of agents, um, you know, my application can get overloaded with all the requests. Is there any way to kind of aggregate that? Um, no, there's no way to aggregate that. Um, there is one functionality we especially have for application testing. We call it, uh, you will see it in test settings. We call it round robin uh, scheduling. Um, so you can do something like, um, I want to test my application every 15 minutes from 30 locations around the world, but use round robin, which means every minute just two of those locations will probe. So we kind of space out uh, those requests evenly. Uh, that would be the way to solve your overload problem. Uh, but no, we cannot kind of aggregate things uh, at the last leg or something like that. We have just, what, one, two minutes. Uh, any last questions? Yes, please. Yes, uh, cloud and enterprise agents are exactly the same in terms of functionality. Uh, I haven't mentioned that, but um, we have this scripting engine, which is not just good for user journeys. Uh, you can also script your own API calls. Uh, go to that API, fetch some data, maybe fetch some authentication token, reuse that for another API call. You can do all that on both cloud and enterprise agents, except remember I said on Cisco routers we don't support the browser bot. That complicated application scripting is only available on that. So it won't be available by default on your Cisco routers. Uh, we're also working on that, and, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get some improvements there. Uh, you also had a question. Are there any plans to have the enterprise agent integrated on Meraki and Max the next device? Uh, no. Um, you um, follow us on Cisco Live uh, in June in Vegas. We will have some announcements to make. Yeah, we're, we're getting our agents on, uh, on uh, MX devices as well. On most of them, there are a couple of uh, low-end models um, that will not be card, but the rest of it, yes. Yes? So features, are they an extra features, or how do Device layer, yes. Uh, those are extra features. Device, la device layer comes for free. Uh, you can just enable it, uh, play with it. It's very simple to set up. It's good old SNMP. Internet Insights, no. It is a different licensing model. Uh, which you have to pay for based on the regions you want to cover and the applications, etc. Uh, it's pretty expensive. That's why I'm saying this is really for global enterprises. They will find value in it. If you're just like a company in Netherlands, it's not the right product for you. You'll find it too expensive and maybe too little value. <coughs> um, maybe just one thing about the licensing. Endpoint agent license is per agent. The more agents you have, the more you pay. Cloud and enterprise agents, it's per test usage. You buy a certain amount of units, uh, and then when you set up tests, they are using those units. You're flexible within a month. You can say, oh, I'll focus all my resources into that problem or in this problem. You're very flexible, but it's all usage-based. So two different pricing models. Don't worry. Uh, OK, um, I'll let you out of the room. Thank you for coming. Uh, I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, I'll be here around for another 50 minutes or so. Um, and just come to me and we can have a discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs>